Welcome back to the second part of the build video. We're looking at some references here. The first thing I picked up is there's quite a lot of detail missing. It's the electrical connections to the auto loader. And those are the same on the Peon uh, sort of kit. So we want to add those details on. Now I'm using lead wire to do this. Um, there's various diameters. I chose the most appropriate one. Just want to make a point here as well. When we're replicating this detail, we aren't strictly replicating it. What we're doing is doing a representation of that detail. So I didn't follow exactly every cable. I just looked at the references sort of carefully and I could work out basically what was being connected, which was pretty obviously the electrical motors and they ran into a conduit at the back of the vehicle. And what I'm doing here is just looking at the sort of lengths and uh, all I did was drill out some holes inside the uh, two motor boxes on the auto loader using the mini drill here. Now the reason I drill these holes is just that it's a lot easier to plug these little wires in. If you try and butt joint lead wire onto plastic using super glue, yeah, it's kind of tricky. So uh, making these little holes makes our life a lot easier. So we'll simply insert uh, a bit of lead wire, obviously not dropping it every time. And uh, just attach one point at a time. So uh, super glue it in the position, let it rest, then come back. And the lead wire, the advantage of it is that it holds its shape and it's very easy to form. So here we are just manipulating it in the position and making the connection as well from box to box or box in the junction. Just place it carefully in there using the tweezers there. Then a dab of super glue. Dab of super glue as well, it sort of affects, um, if you leave a blob at the end, it sort of looks like a bit of a connector as well. So uh, that's a little quick tip for you out of this. And then these, uh, the other ends, that uh, right angle piece of plate there, that's the armor protection that would protect the connectors. So all I'm doing is just hiding that wire between, between that plate. It's not actually connecting the hole or anything. And there you go, some simple detail added. Just showing you here in a close up. Uh, these are the smallest little brass handles that you can get on the kit. And uh, I was manipulating there with a scalpel. Um, they are obviously included, so let's put them on. Now I did find out, of course, these spare track links, yeah, they can be glued on, no problem whatsoever. They aren't really, in, they are not in rust tones, there's nothing special about them. So let's glue them on now, uh, especially so that we don't lose them. Okay, let's build up this Magic Models barrel. It is kind of straightforward to be honest. Uh, I built up the plastic one just as a comparison. The plastic one's pretty good actually. So there's a few uh, little photo etch details start on there, pretty simple. It's these two sort of rings and bolts and flanges that go onto the, uh, onto the barrel. Just uh, make sure you add a small amount of super glue. Put the part in position and there you go. Now we're joining part to part. Use this thick gel type super glue, you get a nice firm bond and also uh, you don't want any movement or droop, you want to make sure everything's square so um, that gel super glue is pretty good for that. Well, the photo etch detail actually goes on the kit part which is the uh, plastic part of this barrel and that just goes on the end there like so. And finally we need to make the plastic part from the kit to the magic model barrel. Really straightforward. Uh, I had to hollow out the end of that plastic part a bit more. Just pointing out here, make sure it's true. You don't have the uh, the muzzle brake at a wrong angle compared to the actual uh, um, kit itself. Okay, crack cream. Don't get too excited here, guys. What we're talking about is filling in the craps. I'm just showing here that uh, we look over the entire model and we're looking at where all these grab handles went on, where there might be some small seams. There's also an ejector pin mark that I'm just pointing out right now. Yeah, I didn't fill that in. You have a good look at overall the model. So this is uh, 
the crack cream. We're talking about Mr. Dissolve Putty, which is a self-leveling putty. We use Mr. Leveling Thinner or, le or any of the Mr. Color Thinners to thin down the mix. I'm reactivating this after, seriously, this is after one year storage, okay? So it, it, was, it wasn't totally dry, it hadn't set, but it wasn't in the liquid state. So we added the liquid thinner, start mixing it and get it ready. All we need is a small brush, and we use the leveling thinner as well to clean that brush. This is consistency you want. You want like a, a, a liquid um, appearance to the putty. It's, it's not like thick putty that comes out of the tube, it's liquid. So let's start to apply this, uh, the crack cream to the kit. Just dip your brush in, get some out. And I think we started on all the grab handles. Um, you will have small little gaps there and also you're gonna thicken out the joint between where the grab handle attaches to a, a hole, or in this case, the turret. It looks better, it provides a firmer joint, and most of all, if there is a small gap there, this stuff will cover it in. I spent quite a bit of time doing this operation, but it really does pay dividends. Um, it's gonna cover up those things that might only become apparent after you've painted, in which case then you're gonna to have to go back, use, use your putties, use uh, fillers, and then paint again, so, so try and do it this way around. Do it first of all. Just shown here on the photo etch as well, um, we've got that joint there. This was this is not super glued um, photo etch. It was just simply push fitted. By using the crack cream here, just on the ends here, we fill the gap and it sort of creates as if the, the part is whole or it's welded. I'm just doing work on the back plate here. Just same process repeated. Look over the entire model. I think that's really key to it. Get down close. Here's the auto loader just being tied up. This is the connection point where I uh, attach this lead wire. So just fixing up that joint and some of the joints. This auto loader mechanism, it really, uh, it was a bit troublesome. I think I explained that. Okay, we're just tidying up a little bit of light sanding here on top of this mantlet or the protection to it. You can still see, if you have a look at the left side of that, you can see those ejector pin marks. There's a crack cream that's going on the hole. This is uh, a little gap here between these PE parts. I'm just tidying up generally um, against any of the seams, etc. This stuff really is uh, a worthy um, investment if you haven't got this stuff just get some try it out you will not be disappointed aircraft models this stuff is really for you it works great on aircraft for those little hairline cracks okay now we need to tidy up uh, that ejector pin mark same procedure we sort of just uh, roll it down using our little drill and we're just filling in that uh, ejector pin mark there A bit more tidy up. You might have to come back to the same place once or twice, no problem. This stuff really works as well as spoon burrs. Now, just checking out the references, and here we go. We, there's another thing that's missing it's this well detail that uh, isn't caught in the parts. To, just to add this real simple, keeping the scale, we're going to use some stretch sprue. Doesn't matter what color it is, I'm using green just so I can sort of show you on the video. And this is the location it needs to go in. The first thing we need to do is uh, apply a bit of liquid cement. Don't flood it too much, but we need to sort of soften up the plastic. And uh, we just need to bed this uh, piece of sprue into position. Once it's in position, we soften it a little bit further with more liquid cement. Now, and now I'm using uh, our friend, the, the, the big needle, to just push into that uh, softened plastic, and that's gonna create the well B texture. Note, this is in scale. I'm not using the overly large putty type thing that you see some guys using. That is not 
really what these wells look like. If you want them in scale, spread stretch brood is a trick. Okay, so we're finished. Okay guys, let's just wrap up this video. The first part, obviously the build construction is complete and it's in basically the modules that are used to paint it in. Uh, as you saw during that last phase, details got added subsequent to the references. When we go into the paint stage, we're gonna look at the references first. So that's the first thing and, and really we should have been doing that from the off. If we start a project that wants some realism, some devotion to the subject, we're best off starting off the references before we even cut the first sprue. But in this case, I didn't. Obviously, we found out about some details that were missing on the reloader and um, some of the other deficiencies like that well bead. Uh, the other thing I'm gonna point out as well, we're gonna talk about references, is we found out that this kit isn't exactly um, what I'd hoped for in, uh, and there's some deviations that we found. If I had known about these references prior, if I'd looked at references before starting the build, might have taken a different approach in the build. But we're gonna cover that all next time. Hope you enjoyed all the footage and the new format. Uh, from now on, uh, video is gonna be a lot more detailed in some aspects, but I still will go to back to some uh, basically out the box builds and probably that's going to be the next project. Hope everybody's keeping well and see you pretty soon on the paint stages.